G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Falcon 3 pistol. This is a semi customizable standalone pistol type weapon with some very chromey textures, and it uses the 10mm pistol animation, which we've got the War Daddy replacer on, so it's going to be pretty good. Now, I'll just point out that this thing kind of looks like a 1911 with its uh, under barrel bit here, and also the um, the grip lines there, I guess that's for, and just the whole general shape of the weapon, but with the exception of this little bit, which is a flash light type thing which you can actually customize so yeah a nice unique looking weapon with this build on the front we'll start off with attachments and first of all you get a caliber conversion you can upgrade this from 38 to 45 it'll limit your mag capacity but give you um, better damage in return so that's pretty good now for the sights we've got the iron sights right now you can have glow sights there for better night sight applications or whatever the description would like to tell you but we all know that they're cooler so we'll definitely chuck on those although it is worth mentioning that you've got a scope here if you feel like engaging targets from a longer distance I'm not really playing to a pistol strength that way but it is nice that that is an option now for the muzzle there's only a suppressor there like we're going to choose anything but the suppressor if there were something like flash hiders or compensators there so that's pretty good that'll give us a little bit more damage thanks to ace operator and improve our stealth capabilities and now we can actually choose the rounds that this thing actually fires so you've got the standard ammunition which will do nothing the plus p will just be over pressure ammunition giving you better range which is pretty neat or the jacketed hollow point rounds will actually give you a little bit more damage taking us from 105 to 124 we're getting into uh, the power territory here now this is where you can actually sort of uh, change that little flashlight build on the front. You can disable it, have the standard light modu uh, module, which will just be like a little bit of a flashlight. I personally don't like using weapon flashlights because it clashes with the Fallout 4's game mechanics of using the Pip-Boy light, which is a little bit glitchy when you've got the weapon put away. But you can chuck on a recon module under that, a VATS uplink for better uh, VATS accuracy. An active tracking module, which um, I think that's something to do with having a... Uh, Kind of like the detect life on a uh, power armor part there but what i want to do is just chuck on the recon module maybe we'll chuck that one on our script one when we get around to making that legendary effect if you need it we will not and you can change the internals so yeah this is basically your receivers but we're doing this last because this mod um will actually do things this way now interestingly the advanced internals um not only um increases your damage but increases the range accuracy and weight so yeah once you've got gun nut rank 4 and the required materials uh, exotic materials apparently yeah you can make this thing so much better so 181 damage I feel like this is going to be quite a powerful little pistol we'll see how it works in uh, not gunners plaza people are bored of me going over there so we'll, we'll change it up we'll go to a different location righto so here we are outside of uh, vault 95 yeah we're playing full at 95 now um, except where the antagonists and the gunners are the protagonists and they're out there to reclaim the Commonwealth wasteland for themselves and possibly find their um, overseer who left and I think that's what the main story of Fallout 76 is going to be. Let's just shoot people and then we can comment on how this weapon performs. Now the thing about these gunners here is that uh, they're lower level than the gunners that we have in the plaza, so we're going to be cutting through them super easily. Now with this weapon, we're doing 181 damage per hit, which is uh, pretty big for a pistol weapon. I think that's higher than you can ever push a 10mm pistol, even with the advanced receiver. So yeah, with that in mind, uh, we can kill all of these... Uh, I guess mid-tier gunners very very easily and it really is no match for this very powerful weapon. Now for an awkward elevator ride and um, to make this even more awkward, oh there's our flash by the way, thank you Fallout 4 for stuttering, Todd Howard you did a marvellous job at uh, making this game uh, nice and optimised but yes, um, I received the Robco loot crate thing today, I've got the Codsworth thing on my desk right now. I'm uh, I'm playing with it, I'm doing this because the loading screens here are dumb. See, I, usually I'd cut this out, but I'm trying to fill in the uh, blank and uh, the dead air with just some commentary and thoughts. So there's going to be no Captain Bridget to uh, worry about in here, so we should be fine. We might as well get a bit of gun through action happening here, considering that there's uh, every gunner and their mother shooting at us right now. Especially Mr. Gutsy there. There we go, one free crit there. We uh, didn't manage to kill that first turret, maybe I should have used a crit on it. 
But uh, yeah, seeming to be going pretty good. Now, I'm even I'm a little bit worried about the Soltrons because even when you're um, not scaled to their level and high above them, they can still do a little bit of damage with their death laser. So you got to take them out pretty quickly. If you see a, char a one with a charged head, you should probably get near cover because when it does its attack, it can take off pretty big um, health sums or sums of your health out of you. So yeah, you got to be semi worried about that. But with a weapon like this fighting these low tier dudes, it's uh, it's really no problem. I mean, the reason I do fight in Gunners Plaza is to fight like semi high um, level enemies. So yeah, the weapon will actually be given a run for its money to see if it can actually be viable in said situation. So what we'll do here is we'll try to seek out whatever gunners are living in these residential quarters and are now are dying in these residential quarters. Uh, I guess you, you could call them the dying quarters now instead of the living quarters, right? Anyways, looks like I did miss one dude up here, or dudette apparently, never mind. And we're on to the main sort of section here. So we got a little bit more gunners to kill in these sections. Hey. Not like it'll be a problem because I can just go super invisible with the press of a button there. Like I said, I, I, have, I have a theory that the ozone layer being depleted and the extra UV rays going around makes everyone really unperceptive and blind by comparison to the sole survivor who uh, lived and grew up in a world with, which actually had an ozone. Downside is she's probably got a lot of tanning to do to catch up, especially if she's Nora, because uh, yeah, she's actually got quite a lot of. Um, I think she's actually the palest you can get. That was one of the things I was uh, confused about when making Winter, because uh, I was I was thinking to make her as pale as possible to make her look as goth as possible, but apparently Nora already has that really pale -ass skin complexion. She got no tan, man. We like them tan down here in Australia. Oh, looks like we've got a high tier enemy here. Um, if only this fight wasn't interrupted by this turret. Go away. There we go. And uh, one more turret to go. That was only a Mark 1. So, Vault 95 not really putting up a fight, but you said you wanted somewhere different. And uh, yeah, I'll let you comment on what you think about that. Maybe I should find some other location where the enemies actually have some uh, huge health bars. And this is where you get Kate... Um, detoxified of her psycho. There's a drama lighting thing here that doesn't cast a shadow. Okay, interesting. Well, anyways, we'll move on. We'll take our falcon pistol. We'll probably shoot some big monster dudes and see how it goes against those guys. Righto, so here we are outside where these bears are um, situated. I think the community name for this bear is Napoleon for some reason. He's not short enough to be Napoleon. I don't like that name. You're gonna have to change it. But uh, yeah, we're getting some good old sneak attack crits on him, and what we want to do is get him nice and close, and then hopefully we can get some more happening, but it uh, looks like he's already in a state of caution where he's detecting us. And as I say that, I get it the only sneak attack critical that I've only ever seen. I see the mysterious stranger behind me. He hasn't exactly shown up, nor does he really want to. He only shows up when he can steal a kill from you, or whether he thinks he can steal a kill. I actually think it's under some... Um, health threshold that you'll actually spawn or not. Okay, this Dusky has learned the um, secret ninja pathing of uh, getting down a thing and now he is completely stuck so we can just sit here shooting at him. So 80 damage on a Yaogwai isn't that bad at all. It's going to take us a little bit to get through him but yeah, these guys are supposed to be the end game uh, bears so you know they're going to be a little bit tanky. Alright, there's another. Now, let's shoot this one in bats a little bit. Sure, why not? Get some penetrator perk action happening here. It actually worked. That's some um, good penetration for a pistol board, you reckon? One of the things about this weapon that is advantageous is its AP usage, which is a thing that all uh, pistols in Fallout 4 share. Okay, we're back in the caution and something's happening over there. Something untextured is popping in, so let's just ignore that and we'll just spam uh, crits and also sneak attack crits on this Yaguai there. He's uh, actually out of range there, so we're getting pretty terrible damage, so yep. It has all the standard uh, 
pros and cons about the pistols there, so nothing really to speak about that actually makes it feel different, but it is doing its job as a pistol very well, so yeah. Now, I'm not actually sure if this is a creation, like a new weapon in and of itself, or whether it's from a different gaming franchise, just ported and brought into Fallout 4, but whatever it is, it's doing quite well for itself, so yeah, I'm happy about that. Granted, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually kill these Yao Guai, and we're not hitting them with sneak attack criticals, but we're still getting through them at a reasonably good pace. Now, the mag capacity on this is only 8, which is a little bit troublesome when you actually want to um, kill a lot of things, because, yeah, you'll be stopping to reload, like, every oh, 5 to 8 seconds, which is a little bit of a shame. Maybe if this mod is still being supported and updated regularly, what the mod, uh, mod author could do is um, give a little bit more of an enhancement with its mag capacity in the form of just extended mags. And uh, one other thing about the um, mod situation here, if you want a mod ported or some changes to be happened uh, to the mod or any mod that um, I do not author, or I, I haven't created myself, um, instead of asking me, you should probably ask the author instead, because uh, most of the time when I'm unfamiliar with mods, I really don't know how to patch things, and yes, it, to actually re-upload them with said patches or requested things like that, I'd actually have to uh, get permission for them from them to either get on the Nexus or the Bethesda.net because yeah, that's what modders do. So now we can sit back here and constantly spam sneak attack criticals. Um, it's a shame that we can't get a little bit closer because we have, uh, <laughs> yeah, because we're being penalized a little bit from the range of this uh, beast that's from us. But yeah, we can take him out pretty easily. Getting about 460-ish damage, 470, with um, those headshots there. It's a nice, easy target to hit, simply because he's not moving. And also, he's got a pretty big head on him. So, yeah. Um, too bad for him, he's terrible at pathing. All of that head, and he's... All of that head, and all of that brain inside, it, and he gets stuck on this. So, yeah. Um, I guess the Fallout 4 enemies are powered by walnuts instead of actual brains or something because the AI just isn't up to scratch. I wonder if it'll be like that in Fallout 76. You find the graft in Monty, you're mentally unprepared for it. You find some random bridge, make him stand halfway across it, and then just <laughs> just ping at him with 10 millimeter pistols until he dies. I actually can see that happening. I kind of hope that that is a thing, but then again, I kind of hope that it doesn't. But yep, there you go. That was the Falcon 3 pistol. Not like a Ford Falcon, so it's uh, not like an AU Falcon. That's an Australian meme, but uh, yeah, still a pretty good weapon. Maybe anything with Falcon is actually kind of cool, unless it's not AU Falcons or BAs. Yeah, I'm more of a Holden man myself. That would probably make no sense to my American viewers, but uh, yeah, I'm talking about Australian family cars here, and it's completely off topic. We'll move on. Righto, so this is one with a scope, and obviously that power armor detect life module is actually happening, so yeah, I guess I was right about that, which is pretty good. Um, it's a nice way of using that effect without getting into power armor, which some people kind of like. Um, people kind of like having this effect without power armor because people just don't like power armor. Also, power armor in Fallout 76 have confirmed that it's not going to be like a vehicle. As soon as you're out of a fusion core, you just have to leave it there. You can actually pick it up again. Now, it being the size that it is in Fallout 4, as we've seen from the trailer and shit, um, that's got to be really freaking heavy in your inventory, so I'm not actually sure how it's going to work. But at least it's not going to be like metal pajamas that you slip on and have magical energy and damage resistance from it. It's going to be more like what it was, I guess, back in the um, original Fallout games when they were isometric adventure do games. Okay, looks like we've got a another ghoul over there. That's the Reaver who suddenly, he just wants to show up. For some reason, this area and Swan's area just sometimes spawns this lone Reaver, so I guess he's desperate to get some of the spotlight that um, some of the bigger monsters and scary monsters do, but nope, he's just a lowly Reaver. He had his time in Fallout 3, but that time is definitely over now. Reavers are complete shit shows to what they were back in Fallout 3. Also, I feel super accurate with this scope. Maybe it's because I was actually focusing on aiming, but yeah, that reticule is actually pretty good. Granted, it does cut off a little bit of your view, but uh, yeah, I guess you can, it makes it easier to focus in on what you're aiming because there's less to distract you around it, right? 
Maybe that's not how you should probably look at it, but maybe that's why I'm aiming better. Who knows? I'm not a psychologist, although I did study Year 12 Psychology, but that was years ago at this point, and I've forgotten most of it. Righto, so now we're in the daylight, so you can actually have a little bit of a better look at these weapons. Some people do complain that I always play during the night, and that they can't actually see the weapon properly, and uh, that's nonsense. I've got some night vision perks. Your screen's not bright enough. Okay, moving on from that, let's uh, play the little game of stop hitting yourself. We'll go for a crit with a sneak attack up first for uh, about 500 damage there, so that's pretty good. Stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, or actually start hitting yourself. Okay, now you can stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Okay, now we are into being shot at territory, so what we want to do is back off a little bit, maybe get behind some cover here, so... We can't get staggered by that mighty automatic gorse rifle there. And uh, we'll see how we go. Now we've got a full AP bar again. We'll switch it back over to our glow sided one. Should give us a little bit better with AP usage. Doesn't look like it's got a whole... It's got much of an effect though. So maybe it's not actually a real scope. Rather than just a um, sight that looks like a scope and hasn't got that scope keyword. If we are using a rifle, I'd be disappointed because we wouldn't be able to make use of the sniper perk, but, you know, that's fine. You do get a little bit more of a zoom in, which is nice. Uh, that 2.5 zoom in is about the happy medium of the happy maximum that you want to get out of a pistol, because any more than that, then you're just trying to plink at enemies that are too far away and doing yourself uh, no favours with that damage penalty also, we're really fast critting here, the VATS camera couldn't be bothered to actually do those animations, which made that kill very, very fast in the end. So, there you have it, I think that is about enough for this particular weapon, that was the Falcon 3 pistol, and it is a fine weapon mod, the fact that it is a weapon custom made from scratch, I think it is, is a nice little bonus factor there, so, creation, guys, uh, yeah, creative points bonus. I always get that mixed up. I then I I say creation, and then I either switch to creation club or creation kit in my mind. But no, I actually mean that this is really creative, and it earns some extra points in my book. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. So if you'd like to see this in your game, check out the description. Read more about it on the mod pages. If you have any questions about whether to um, where you're going to get this thing, it's probably easy just to go to the mod page. But I will try to remember to post um, where you can get it down in the description along with the links there so you can access this mod a little bit easier. Thank you for watching guys. Also I like how the 10mm animations actually have the slide moving when you shoot and reload, that's useful.